Timmy, let's talk about philanthropy and all of the amazing benefits a few strategically placed charitable donations can provide. Sure. My uncle got a free turkey for Thanksgiving after his foot got cut off at your factory and he couldn't work anymore. Oh, I'm sure he got a delightful severance package for that one, Timmy. You canned him for some made-up reason so he couldn't even get unemployment. Timmy, I'm not talking about that kind of penny-andy charity. I'm talking about the kind that can provide real benefits to billionaires who can afford to spend real money. Gah. Here we go again. So, what are the things that benefit you, but not the rest of us? Well, one great benefit is tax relief. Since these donations are tax deductible, you can avoid income taxes for decades if you play your cards right. What about estate taxes? Those too, Timmy. Not to mention the horrible capital gains taxes. So, what other kinds of horrible stuff can you rich people do with something as nice seeming as giving away money? Not so fast with the whole giving thing, Timmy. What's important is the pledging of money. You see, if you pledge a donation of $100 million, like Mark Zuckerberg did for education, you actually only have to give 5% of that money to the cause itself. The other 95% of what you pledge can be invested in a trust that continues to make money in any way you see fit, even if it's counterproductive to the cause you're trying to help. So you could donate a bunch of money to fight climate change and invest 95% of it into burning oil in an open pit? Well, if you think that's going to be profitable, sure, why not? It might be fun, so who's going to stop you? This is even more ridiculous than I thought it could possibly be. Speaking of Mark Zuckerberg, you could also pledge to donate your money to charity while actually diverting it into an LLC or limited liability company, which means you can do whatever you want with the money, and people will completely forget that you're a sentient AI bent on destroying the human race. Allegedly. What a creep. There's also something called a DAF, or Donor Advised Fund, which is sort of like a checking account for donations. You put in money and it can sit there for years, even decades without going to the cause you've chosen to pretend to help. So you can get the tax break now and maybe never actually donate the money? Precisely. Wow, that is truly awful, but those can't be the only benefits, right? Correct, Timmy. You could also use donations to purchase the goodwill of people who might otherwise find your business dealings unsavory. Who wouldn't find your business dealings unsavory? Well, it doesn't matter what horrible but highly profitable thing you're into, Timmy. Getting people hooked on opioids, heating up the planet, pouring oil onto baby penguins, dealing in propaganda and spyware, whatever your dark heart desires, you can always make it better by donating some money for, let's say, art museums like the Sackler family. They're the drug dealers, right? Right. Or to charter schools like the Walton family. So tax breaks and whitewashing your reputation, that's what you think charity is for? Well, mostly, but there's more to it than that, Timmy. Oh, Lord. Sometimes, you'll want to take advantage of laws that allow you to donate to a cause completely anonymously with almost no oversight. Why would you even do that? I thought you wanted to wallow in the goodwill of the people you're pretending to help. Instead of manipulating the system, if these rich people want to help out the poor so bad, why not just pay them more money? What? Seems like these donations are either for rich people or for things that poor people don't even care about. So just pay them more money. I literally do not understand what you're saying, Timmy. Pay. More. Never mind. So why is this a good thing? Because it's better to give than to receive, Timmy. Except for tax breaks, it's better to receive those. So all of these donations are a racket? Well, mostly. But you can always do as Bill Gates did and donate millions and millions of dollars to an actually worthy cause, curing diseases in impoverished places. But there's no need to do something nice without any profit motive. Something tells me this is even worse than you're saying. Of course. Bill Gates has poured billions into fighting diseases like AIDS and malaria in Africa. Okay, that's good so far. What's the catch? Well, the catch is he's heavily invested in the companies who manufacture these drugs, so he's not exactly losing money on the deal. But his generous donations have meant that diseases, as well as malnutrition, which kill far more people, have gone largely ignored. All the while, these drug companies made a gross profit of almost $9 trillion in just under two decades. Now, isn't that swell? I gotta level with you, it's not that swell. How many people died of all those other diseases they just totally ignored? No, oh, I don't know. A million? Millions? I don't know. But what's bigger, a measly million or nine trillion? So what if somebody finds out Bill Gates is a massive pile of shit? And to think he's actually one of the good ones. So I'm told. He already beat the rap of allegedly having a monopoly by supposedly bundling the functional Windows operating system with the popular web browser of Internet Explorer. Now he's even more tools at his disposal. Sure, there's always the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, but there are also important YouTube influencers who can take massive sums of money to cover up his terrible behavior. YouTubers suck. True, Timmy, but they are cheaper than buying a university or even an entire newspaper. Probably even cheaper than buying Twitter just to run it into the ground for the lulz. <laughs> True that, Timmy. But we haven't even gotten to the best part, the 501c4. 
explosive paints? No. These amazing tools of change allow rich folks to make unlimited donations to any sort of nonprofit while avoiding the triple threat of estate, income, and gift taxes. One example is Yvon Chouinard, the founder of Patagonia, and his wife. Faux so hippie codes can make you a billion dollars? Well, sure, why not? Now, what they did was donate 2% of the voting shares of their company to a 501c4, and that gift was taxed for a total of $17.5 million. If they'd given those same shares to their heirs, they could have expected a tax of over a billion dollars. Couldn't the government have used that billion dollars to pay for stuff? Wouldn't that be a good thing? Well, no, Timmy, because as anyone who knows almost nothing about how things work knows, taxes are theft. Don't taxes help pay for the things we all need and use every day? Like the infrastructure these businesses needed to be successful in the first place? No, Timmy, that's theft. So the government is just going to accept that they don't have as much money to pay for stuff. Oh, no, Timmy. The government is going to get paid one way or the other. If they can't get it from me, and they can't, they're going to dangle your mommy and daddy from the ankles and shake every last cent from their pockets. But that's the price they have to pay for deciding to not be born fabulously wealthy. Not sure that was a choice, but... So why is it good for you to avoid taxes, but also good for regular people to have to pay? Listen, Timmy, it's not a matter of good or bad. It's just the way it is, and you're going to have to deal with it. Just because it's legal doesn't make it right. Timmy, think about Bruce Wayne. When Bruce Wayne becomes the caped crusader, why, there's no problem too big for him to solve. But his company caused all the problems to begin with. He could pay his workers better, use taxes to better fund schools, fight crime by helping people get higher paying jobs. Timmy, literally nobody would ever watch that movie.